For Norbert Mrema, an environmental engineering graduate, flies have become a profitable business. In 2022, he founded a company that uses black soldier fly larva to process organic waste. Each week, they get through around seven tons of it at his facility. Most of the areas uh, have no proper waste uh, management systems. So you find all these waste, more than 50% are organic waste. And uh, where does this organic waste end up? In the landfill, in the streets, and other improper areas. So I came with an idea of how to convert this waste into valve, and that's where I came up with the Black Soldier Fly technology. Around 1.8 tons of lava feed on the organic waste, converting it into animal feed and organic fertilizer. From florists who purchase the fertilizer to fish and poultry farmers who rely on protein-rich animal feed, Norbert's innovation is already benefiting a variety of clients. We used to make our own feed by mixing chaff and shrimp, but after switching to Norbert's feed, we noticed our chickens were healthier, gained more weight and started laying more eggs. Norbert's company now employs six people, but he's not the only one doing this. As one of only a few enterprises in Tanzania using black soldier fly larvae for waste management, his business is part of a growing but still emerging industry in Dar es Salaam. Despite this, he says his operating costs remain a challenge. Sometimes his team has to pay for the waste and transport it to the facility, factors that drive up the price of their products. For many around the world, flies are perceived as a nuisance and disease spreaders. But for a few individuals like Norbert, certain flies, such as the black soldier fly, are a lifeline, a technology that could revolutionize how we handle waste and help farmers improve their yields. Norbert's work has caught the attention of the government, which is actively looking to support homegrown innovators. Our future Tanzanian waste management. We can achieve a bright future in terms of waste management in Tanzania, but we must set operational benchmarks, offer training and build capacity, whether on a small scale or, where possible, a large one. Norbert says he's determined to change the way people view waste and is focused on keeping it out of landfills and putting it to good use. With Tanzania's population of around 62 million people expected to almost double by 2050, he hopes to establish hubs capable of handling up to 100 tons of waste per day. By assigning real value to waste, Norbert believes entire farming communities and the general public stand to benefit. Isaac Lukando, CGTN, Dar es Salaam. Let's dive deeper into this topic. Mpumuzi Sukati, Senior Food and Nutrition Officer at the Food and Agriculture Organization's Regional Office for Africa, based in Accra, Ghana, joining us live uh, via Zoom. Um, the world is marking the International Day of Awareness of Food Waste and Loss. Uh, Mpumuzi, let's begin with a matter of awareness. Paint for us a picture of the food loss and waste on the African continent right now. How bad is it? Uh, well, thank you very much for having me on the show and uh, thank you very much for discussing this important topic during the day of celebration of uh, uh, or commemoration of, uh, of food loss and waste. Well, the situation is, uh, is not looking very good in the continent. We are struggling with uh, getting the right data and information to know exactly the extent of the problem but it is estimated that up to 20% of the food that is produced is lost and wasted uh, before it uh, reaches the consumer and after the, the, the consumer table. So the food loss is uh, when the food is from the farm into the consumer table and the food waste from the consumer table after. So the, the extent of the, of the loss, especially in Africa, is very high, You're close, up to 20% by estimates, but uh, from our observation, it could even be higher. And why does such loss and waste persist, yet there is shortage, starvation and hunger in several parts of Africa? 
Uh, may you kindly repeat the question? Why does uh, such loss and waste persist? And yet in Africa, we, we have uh, shortages, we have starvation and hunger in several parts. Yes, it, it, is, it is very unfortunate because estimates are saying that up to 300 million people in the, in the continent are still going to bed without, uh, without food. The prevalence of hunger and malnutrition is still very high. We are also seeing uh, very high levels of people who cannot afford healthy diets, estimates of up to one, 1 billion people. So it's an unfortunate situation because the food that is lost and wasted is produced using limited resources. So it's a burden to the, to the environment, no, no, not only for people, uh, also for the environment and the, including issues of uh, sustainable use of the limited resources that we have. Uh, let's talk about that impact um, a little bit more. Give us a, a sense of the impact of such food loss and wastage on nutrition, on economies and on the environment, as you've mentioned. Yes, uh, de definitely, because uh, every ton of food or uh, that is produced, it is using labor, it is using land, it is, it is using water. All these are very, very scarce resources, especially in this uh, in this day and age of uh, climate change and diminishing resources. The demand for food, uh, on the other hand, on the other hand, is is increasing in a situation of limited ability for the continent to feed its its, its population. So. The problem of food loss and waste is a very big dead weight. In fact, if we can tackle the problem of food loss and waste, we can probably solve a lot of the food the food security issues that we have. We, we, we might not solve all of them, but it will have a very big impact in getting people out of hunger and starvation and, and malnutrition.